Hi and welcome to White Wolf Yoga and to today's class, Yoga for a Healthy Spine. So our spine is one of the most complex and important structures within our body, so keeping it strong and supple is really key to our, our general health and well-being. As always, I'll keep offering different options on postures through the class, so take it nice and easy and rest whenever you need. See you on the mat. standing up and we're going to work with some spinal rolls so this is really nice for just mobilizing and opening through our spine so we want to make sure that our feet are around about hip distance apart have nice soft knees so we're going to drop into a to a fold so we'll bring the first of all the chin towards the chest and then we're going to imagine each and every vertebrae just releasing so we go all the way down the slower the better so really doing this with awareness and intention one by one until you're just hanging in a fold we're not stretching into it we're relaxing into it not forgetting the neck is part of the spine as well so we want to keep the neck nice and soft apply a little bit of um, strength into the core by gently drawing the belly button in towards the body and that will just help support our lower back. Okay, so let's unravel. So you want to push through the feet, keep the knees soft, keep the core engaged, and visualize the vertebra of the back. And this time from the bottom up, we're stacking one on top of the other, on top of the other, until we come all the way up. Head in line, nice and open. Let's do a few of these in your own time. Exhale. Nice and slowly, rolling it down. Just hanging and breathing a few breaths. When you're ready, coming back up, push through the soul. Squeeze the core, roll it up. Lift the heart a little, pull back the shoulders inhale let's go once more roll exhale knees stay soft relax here be a little bit different on this last one let's just settle into the fold first so just hang and breathe in it doesn't matter where your hands have ended up if they're on the floor or if they're not it doesn't matter as long as you feel a good stretch so we leave the left hand where it is and just pick the right arm up and into the air. Keep the knees nice and soft. Oh, change up the side. So we'll drop the, the right hand down. And pick the left arm up. So to keep our spine strong and supple, we work on uh, flexibility, mobility of the spine, but also the strength of the connective tissue, the muscles that support the spinal structure. So that's really our focus for today's class. So releasing that left hand down, we'll slowly roll all the way back up to the middle. And then when we reach our mountain pose position, we'll just give a little, a little twirl to the sides, just for release, for openness. And then we'll keep our feet glued into the mat. And we'll take our arms up and into the air. We've got biceps by the ears, then we'll take the hands into a pistol grip. And we're going to work on lateral flexion of the body here. So we root down through the soles. Let's make sure our arms over towards the left side. See that right shoulder? Pull it back and away from the body. And that'll stop us collapsing here with the arm in front of the face. So pull the fingers up and away from the body so you can feel the skin stretching across that right side. Nice deep inhale and exhale back to the middle. Let's go the other way. Inhale, find the length and exhale, draw the arms over towards the right side. Feel the left side of the body stretch. Keep drawing the left shoulder back and away. Okay, let's go. Once more on each side. Inhale to center with the breath. We'll exhale over to the left and we'll inhale to center. And we'll exhale over towards the right. 
how you like. Inhale to center. We're going to exhale, release the hands down past our heart center and find mountain pose. Now in mountain pose, we just want to close the eyes. We just want to feel our posture. Notice our natural habits and tendencies of our body's alignment. So first of all, bring your awareness to your, to your feet, to the soles of the feet. Do you feel like you're pressing more weight into one foot than the other, maybe? And if that feels the case, try and even the body weight out so that you're a bit more evenly distributing through both feet. Send the awareness up towards the hips. So this is a really important one, especially when we're thinking about loading into our lumbar spine, our lower back here. You can even, if you need to, open your eyes and have a little look at what I'm going on about in case it, it doesn't make sense and just if you're, if you're only listening. But some of us have a tendency to tilt the hips in a certain way, either here or here. And if we're over tilting here, you can see it puts a lot of pressure onto the lower spine. If we tilt the other way, it collapses into our belly. So what we want to do is try and find a nice balanced pelvis. So notice, or imagine I should say, imagine that you've got a bowl of water that's sitting in your pelvis and it's a bowl of water that's full to the brim. Would your bowl of water have more danger of spilling out the front or out the back? For me, I've got this tendency to maybe have a bit more of a curve here, so my water would more naturally spill out the front. But if you tend to drop into the hips, then your water's going to be spilling out the back. So try and even out that bowl so that you feel a little bit more balanced through the pelvis. And that setting up of the pelvis is going to support the lower spine. Also, can we bring the navel just a little in towards the body? to activate into that core and that core helps to support our lumbar spine too. Okay, once we've got the hips and the lower spine, can we move a little higher towards the chest? So nice and open through the chest. We inhale here, just shrug the shoulders up towards the ears. Exhale, slide the shoulder blades down the back, just feeling the arms rest at the sides and lengthening the, the crown of the head up towards the ceiling just to stop collapsing into the neck. Notice the position of the head. So a, a, a new phenomenon, text neck, which is a real thing. We spend, we spend so much time like this, looking at our phones, that our heads tend to be shifting forward. And the weight of the head is putting a lot of pressure on the neck in this position. If we can pull the chin back slightly and align the head much more centrally where it was built to be, on top of the neck and we take a lot of pressure off the neck and into the shoulders. So if you're not sure what I mean by that, try and think of your chin pulling in towards your throat and that'll, that'll line you up a little bit nicer and it feels strange especially if you've got into this habit. You want to pull back. So this posture, nice and aligned, nice and open, is what we're going to try and think about when we look at building a strong, healthy posture that's going to support our spine. So we can run through weight distribution, where your pelvis might be anterior or posterior tilted, supporting the lower back through engaging the core and lengthening the rest of the spine, lifting through the crown, and then watching for our text neck, pull the head back. Okay, so we're going to take ourselves down onto all fours now. So we'll just bring ourselves into tabletop position with the knees underneath the hips, the shoulders in line over the elbows, over the wrists, fingers spread nice and wide. Inhale as we press up and into cow. And we'll move, exhale back and into cat. And drop the head. Let's just be extra aware of the spine as we're moving here, just really observing how it moves with each pose. Inhale, we press up. Exhale, we press back. Inhale, lift. One more. Exhale, back. Inhale, into neutral spine. And exhale, into child's pose. Drop the hips to the heels. 
relax the belly and the chest on top of the thighs and breathe. Maybe even just giving the hips a little shake from side to side here. We'll just soften and release into the muscles that support the lower back. Nice and slowly, we're going to take ourselves from child's pose into a kneeling position. We're just going to, we're going to twist it out. So for, for mobility through our spine, we want to move it as many different directions as we can, just to help keep it nice and open. So here we're going for a twist. We'll take the left hand outside of the right thigh, the right hand around behind the back, or even you could take the right hand over towards the, the left hip if you want a little bit more. It'll work you more into your core. We'll inhale, lift, and exhale, twist, twisting over the right shoulder. See if you can feel the whole spine moving with the twist. Inhale, grow. Exhale, twist. Nice. One more breath. Inhale, lift. And exhale to twist. And exhale, release. Come back to centre. We'll go the other way. Uh, right hand, left leg, left hand behind the back, all around to the hip. Inhale, grow. Exhale, twist. Again, feeling the whole spine move. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist. One more breath. Inhale, lift, and exhale, twist. Release nice and slowly back through the middle. We'll bring our hands onto the floor for tabletop, and then we'll take tabletop down to sphinx. So we bring the elbows onto the ground, the forearms too, and then we're going to lower the hips onto the, onto the mat so that we're in a nice supported sp uh, sphinx pose. So we'll keep our feet a distance apart, push the toes into the floor, Push the elbows, the forearms and the hands deeply into the mat and extend the heart forward. So when we're working with the spine, we always want to, we want to prioritise the length of the spine so that we're not going to collapse and press the bones together here. Sometimes, you know, if you really want to get into it, feel like you want to get into a deep back bend, you can sort of force the upper body up and all that's doing here is collapsing into that lumbar spine. If we're looking for strength and stability, Keep pulling the heart forward, that will create space between the vertebrae and the lower back and then as we hold, we strengthen the structures around the spinal column. So we're holding here into our sphinx, push into the toes, push into the hips, push into the hands. Keep drawing the heart forward, the shoulders pull back and away from the ears. Take three, two and one, just relax, bringing the hands onto the elbows, drop into crocodile and give the hips a little shake, nice and gently from side to side. And Sphinx is a pose that you can practice, especially if you maybe feel a bit of loading into that lower back and you want some release. You can take Sphinx, just at, if you've got a couple of minutes every day and it'll really just help to build that openness and that support. Okay, so we're gonna move from Crocodile and we're gonna take ourselves into a Cobra pose. So the hands underneath the shoulders, the elbows squeeze tightly in towards the ribs. Just like we were doing in Sphinx, push into the hips and push the, into the toes and use the strength of the lower back to lift. So there's no weight in the hands. Look forward. Breathe three, two, and one, release. Relax down. We're gonna come up again. Now you can either take that same position or go a little bit deeper, release the hands, clasp them behind the back, draw the arms away from the body, and inhale, lift, hold and breathe, for three, arms draw away from the body, push into the toes, push into the hips, two, and one, release again, back and rest, maybe give the hips a little shake out, okay, let's take the hands underneath the shoulders, we'll inhale, Press up and into tabletop and exhale, relax back into our child's pose. Nice and slowly. We're going to take ourselves up for a couple of standing positions. So we're going to inhale up and into tabletop, touch the toes and exhale into down dog. So lifting the hips nice and high, relaxing the head, shaking it out. Walk the dog if it feels good. And we'll walk the feet all the way in towards the hands. So we walk ourselves into forward fold. 
Then we'll just drop in and breathe here. Nice and easy. Knees as bent as you like. And this time we'll lift up we'll lift up halfway, head to hip height, engage the core. And then nice and slowly we're gonna press down through the soles of the feet. Inhale the arms up and into the air. And as we exhale, we'll take the hands down past our heart and into mountain pose. Okay, so we're gonna set up for a couple of standing positions. We're gonna do triang um, regular triangle and then a revolving triangle. So we'll turn the toes of the right foot to the side, keep the left toes pointed forward. We don't want the stance really wide. If it's a bit too wide, it's gonna, especially when we come into a revolving triangle, it's gonna be really hard to maintain the balance. So just be aware of your position through the feet and adjust as you need. We've got the right so, um, heel in line with the arch of the left foot and the legs are nice and strong, the core is active, the spine is long. We'll take the left hand onto the hip and the right arm up and away from the body. Inhale as we reach and exhale, extend that right arm away. Keep reaching away and when it feels deep enough along the inside of the right leg, take the right hand down on the inside and pick the left arm up into the air. Don't worry about getting the hands to the floor if it's not going there. What we want to prioritise more is to open it here. So we're drawing the top hip and shoulder back. So this pose is nice for helping to support and strengthen around the spine. Keep pulling in the navel towards the body. Gaze up if possible or down if you need a little bit more stability. Let's take another three, two, okay, one, press up, inhale. Exhale, right arm floats up, left hand slides down the left leg, deep breath into the right lung, inhale, and exhale. Okay, so we're finding our hands onto the hips. We're gonna keep the right foot where it is, but turn the left foot the same direction as the right so that the hips are square and both feet are pointed to, to the right side of the body, to the right side of the room, sorry. So the hands are on the hips to start with. Ground through the soles, engage the core, and inhale, reach the left arm up and into the air, nice and long. As you exhale, take this left hand and can we bring it across on a diagonal towards the outside of the right foot? Now it might not get all the way, don't worry if it doesn't, you can just place it along the outer calf or if you've got a block, you can use a block here. But once we've got that hand in position, let's rotate. And this rotation is really nice for the spine. Opening through the heart, either holding there or taking the right arm up and into the sky. Hold and breathe for three, keep opening the body into the twist. Two, and one, release the right hand onto the right hip, the left hand onto the left hip, push through the soles, come back through centre, let's switch up the sides. So we'll turn the left foot to the side. Left heel in line with the arch of the right foot, hands on the hip. Inhale, left arm up. And exhale, reach away with that left hand. And when it feels deep enough, drop the left hand down and peel back the top hip and the top shoulder. Right arm up and into the sky. Equal distribution through both feet. So this pose, push into the outside of the back foot and into the big toe on the front foot. Two. And one, inhale, arms up. Exhale, float the left arm up. And take the right hand down the body. Inhale, arms back to center. Exhale, hands onto the hips. Turning now the right foot into the same direction as the left. Revolving triangle to the other side. So this is a tricky pose. Take it nice and easy, getting in and getting out. Left hand stays on the hip. Let's inhale, reach the right arm up. And as we exhale, take the right hand down on a diagonal to the outside of the left foot, anywhere you need to. And you can either keep the hand on the hip or send the left arm up and into the air. Holding and breathing here. Can we take another two? One. And coming out. Left hand to the left hip, right hand to the right hip. Slowly release all the way back to the middle and turn the feet forward. Okay, so we're going to come down back onto the ground and we'll come down through a little flow. So we'll inhale, arms up, 
soften the knees and exhale, drop down and into forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen, flat back. And exhale, soften the knees. And take yourself all the way into a kneeling position. From where we're going to switch to be seated the other way. So we'll drop the hips to the side and bring the legs out in front. So we're going to take boat pose. So we've done a lot of strengthening into the area around the lower back here, but we also want to work into that core so that we're nice and solid all the way around the spine. Hands underneath the thighs, option one. Option two, a bit trickier, you can release the arms out in front of the body. I'm going to come in with the hands on the thighs, see how I feel, and then we can maybe adjust from there. If you want a nice lift, slowly roll the weight back onto the sacrum, find the balance. And can you bring the feet up either in line with the knees or maybe eventually a little straighter? And you can either hold there or release the arms. I'm going to go easy today. Let's take five. Keep lifting the heart, reaching the fingers forward. Three. Keep breathing. Two. Well done. One. Let's take it down. And we're going to switch position and we're going to go back onto our front. Now, we've done already our Sphinx, we've done already our Cobra and our Cobra variation. We're going to work here next into Bow Pose. So take this gently, take this easy, and if it's not working for you, you can either just take instead, work instead on your Sphinx or your Cobra. Okay, so Bow. We're laying flat first of all. Can you bring your heels in towards the bum? And we'll take the hands round towards either the feet or the ankles. So just watch that the knees aren't doing this, aren't going out to the side, try and keep them in line with the hips. And we'll take this in stages, this pose. So first of all, we've got hold of our feet and we're gonna leave the lower body on the floor. And just see if you can take an inhale and lift up the chin and the chest off the mat. And hold here for three, keep breathing as you hold, two, one, release the upper body down. This next round, keep your upper body on the floor. We're going to work on, on the legs. So kick the feet into the hands and see if you can lift the legs. Hold for three. Push the back of the uh, tops of the feet into the back of the hands. Two. And one, release. Okay. If that's not good and you want to go for the full bow, Let's inhale, lift the chin and chest, and then kick into the palms. Maybe a little roll on the belly. Five, deep breathing. Four, three, two, relax, and one. Take it down. Release the feet. Let the legs drop on the mat. Take the arms wide into cactus position. Turn the uh, head towards the right, the left ear is on the floor, and just to release that lower spine, slide up the right knee towards the right elbow, like a half frog. And there is this flow with the breath. Let's go the other way, slide the right leg back. Turn the head to the left. Inhale, left knee up. And release the left leg back. Taking the hands, we'll bring them underneath the shoulders. Inhale, press up into tabletop. Exhale, push back into child's pose. Nice and slowly from child's pose, we'll lift into kneeling. We'll shift ourselves into a comfortable seated position just to take one last spinal twist together. So nice and tall through the body, inhale, arms up. And exhale, twist into the right. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. Another two breaths. Exhale to release. 
inhale, arms up. And exhale, twist to the left. And breathe. Exhale, inhale, arms all the way up into the air, hands into prayer, and exhale the hands to the heart, 